Okay, so hello historians. Um, today I will do a very short video on uh, appeasement as well as uh, the different skills that you all will be tested uh, for your next WA. Okay, so let's recap uh, what is appeasement and I hope you do remember uh, the guy in this particular slide. Now, appeasement was actually the British policy um, of allowing Hitler to actually grow in power. That's why we say here, allowing Hitler to expand Germany territory unchecked. Um, of course, there were many reasons why appeasement was adopted and we'll explore that in a bit. But Appeasement is definitely something that is very closely associated with um, Chamberlain. So I hope you know how he looks like. All right now, of course, it was seen now as something that is weak, right? Because appeasement, then Hitler became bolder and stronger, and it eventually led to World War II. But at that time, it was very popular. And it was something that was very pragmatic. Pragmatic means it was something that was reasonable. It was something that was needed. So I hope you remember that on your left is Chamberlain and on your right is, of course, Hitler. Now, as you can see specifically, um, this is a very interesting video of how we see Chamberlain trying to push uh, the globe, right? From the chaos, from what was happening in the Czech Republic. And we sort of um, ensured that he pushed this world into peace. Um, so was appeasement actually successful or was it actually um, unfortunately not successful? I think this was things that we discussed already in class. And if you see the map, remember the map, okay? And if you really look very carefully, Germany has already acquired um, most of the land that um, Germany was punished to let go during Treaty of Versailles. So this uh, sort of like pink color land is actually Sudentaland. So why was Sudentaland important? Um, was it part of Germany at the end of it? Um, and what did Czechoslovakia did to stop Germany from acquiring Sudentenland? And what was the response of France as well as Great Britain? Why is it that they have to give up uh, Sudentenland um, and allow Germany to take Sudentenland at this time? So remember at the background is definitely your policy of appeasement. Now you can see based on this interesting cartoon, right, this person here is actually the German army and you can see there's a little hand here possible uh, the hands of Hitler now you can see that this is almost like um, to push different countries so you can see here is Austria you can see here is Czechoslovakia Balkans are uh, Eastern European countries and then you have uh, the Northwest Europe you have France and you have Britain but look at what the British guy here said why should we take a stand about someone pushing someone else when it's all far away so this were one of the many reasons why appeasement was adopted because it didn't bother Britain and it didn't bother France or did it okay so if let's say um, all these countries were to stand up and stop these German soldiers uh, would it have made a difference okay so appeasement what were the reasons for appeasement um, I hope you remember what all these symbols meant because we're going to do a very quick recap um, for the reasons of appeasement and altogether there are six reasons. Right, so why was appeasement adopted? The first three reasons are definitely it was memories of World War I. Okay, so countries do not want to sort of go through uh, what they had went through during World War I. Of course, there was a lot of suffering. Okay, um, at the same time, uh, while we see as if Britain and France did not want to take part 
uh, in anything that was happening beyond their countries. I mean, another reason was definitely they needed to buy time. They were still sort of recovering from World War One. So by giving in to Hitler, by appeasing to Hitler, I think the whole idea was to buy time and the whole idea was to rearm. Rearm means to buy or to get more weapons, you know, to make sure that their people, if they need to go to war, they are ready. Now, the third reason is, of course, we all remember that America was not in link of nations. So, um, if the member country and the strongest member country is not in league of nation, then definitely uh, it was very hard for Britain and France to handle just Germany alone. So America was practicing this isolationism and it did affect what happened in Europe and how uh, Hitler definitely got bolder. Now, the fourth, fifth and sixth reason is definitely Treaty of Versailles was too harsh. The very fact that uh, in Treaty of Versailles, um, a lot of these three big, uh, the three big countries, Britain, France, as well as USA, they had different ways to punish Germany. And uh, Treaty of Versailles was a bit harsh, okay? Um, it broke the German people up, it took German's resources. At the same time, uh, Germany was expected to pay the reparations. Reparation is that punishment. Uh, so they did regret that the decision. So that's why they felt that it's okay if, let's say, Germany needed uh, to have a bit more resource because, you know, they have been punished enough. Now, another reason why appeasement was adopted was because, you can see, um, communism was something that they uh, were more scared of because the idea of communism especially scared people who had the resources and had money, businesses, for example, right? Because we know that what a country that that subscribes or a country that believes in communism, what happens to to businesses? What happens to resources, land? You know, everything would have sought to be given up equally. Now, of course, the last reason is definitely the misjudgment. I think Chamberlain, especially, and and the politicians then felt that um, Hitler was someone that can be trusted, trusted more than any communist leaders or more than any communist party. So that's why they felt that, eh, let's give in, let's give Hitler as well as Germany an opportunity and a chance. Right. So these are some videos to help you understand about appeasement. I'm going to. Um, also give you the PDF so you can actually access to the videos and sort of um, watch it before your tests. Now for 1st of August, it is a written assignment. It is only uh, skills and you can see these are the skills I'm testing you. I will go through with you inference purpose. At the same time, I will also go through with you what is testing assertion. Okay, so for the test, these are the materials that you need. Uh, appeasement Worksheet 1, Appeasement Worksheet 2, which is actually in your file, and it's actually Appeasement Worksheet 3, uh, the yellow colour paper that I gave last lesson. So uh, definitely for you to prepare yourself, you need all these three worksheets. All right, so I am going to use this source, which I think we have gone through in great detail about this source, but I'm going to actually show you how to answer inference using this source. So an inference question is like this. What can you infer from source B about appeasement? Uh, it is an IEE type of question. Now, how do you answer such a question? You always start with inference and answering the question. That means, you know, I can infer that appeasement was what? Based on the source, it was risky, it was dangerous. Now, moving on after you have made the inference and answering the question, what you need is definitely the source details, okay? Or the evidence, that's what the second E stands for. Right from the source, I can see that Chamberlain was pushing the world from chaos. You can actually see the chaos here, um, and you can see that you know, um, after the Czech crisis where Britain gave in Hitler uh, to Hitler, all right, there was um, sort of a giving in, right? A peace now. From this picture, however, it was perhaps a wrong move because if Chamberlain do not push the world properly instead of bringing it to peace, 
it can actually lead it to war. So what am I doing? Right? The blue color box, you can see specifically is evidence and it is a cartoon. Now in the exams or in N level, if you see a cartoon or a picture, then you must describe the source. You need to describe what you see. Okay, so after you have made the inference or you answer the question, which is in the yellow box, you follow it by giving evidence. All right, now moving on. The green color box is actually the second E, which is the explanation. So this suggests that appeasement was not simple. This suggests that appeasement could be complicated and may not be successful. So you can see that I've color coded the answers, right? And it's important because uh, moving on, all the answers will be color coded like this so you can uh, see it visually, okay? So remember when you have an IEE type of question or an inference question, you need to infer and answer the question, okay? The first step, you need to give your source details. Your second step here, and of course, you need definitely you need your explanation, which is the third step. All right, to get five marks is pretty easy, so make sure that you don't um, give up. All right, so now we are going to look at purpose and how to answer purpose. Okay, so how does the purpose question look like? Okay, the purpose question can look like why was the source created? What was the purpose of the source? I mean, these are possible type of questions. Now, purpose questions can be as high as six marks or it can be five marks. Now, purpose in terms of if you want to be guided or in terms of formula, in terms of helping you unpack your ideas, it is using very basically C-A-M-O, creator, audience, message, as well as outcome. Alright, what is outcome? Outcome is when uh, the audience see this particular source, what do you think the audience uh, would think about? And then after that, how would they react? Alright, so we're going to go step by step now. So firstly, it's always about again identifying creator and audience. Alright, so why was the source created? Answer the question. The source was created by a British cartoonist. You can get that from the provenance here. For those of you who do not know what's provenance, provenance is that few sentence on top of a source. Okay, the source was created by a British cartoonist for the British audience. Why do you know it's a British audience? Well, obviously a British cartoon definitely published in some sort of newspaper, okay, uh, was for the British audience. Next, what is the M, the message? All right. Now, the message was to criticize Chamberlain for making a dangerous decision, for putting the world at a dangerous position. So you can see, like what we mentioned, the fact that after the Czech crisis, it was a dangerous situation. He was playing with fire, right? Because one wrong move, the whole entire world could fall into war. Now, the blue color seems familiar because we have gone through it in the inference question. So you see that any question would definitely require source details. Okay? Followed by, obviously, explanation. So this blue and green, you cannot run away from it. All right? If you're doing source-based question, you need source details, you need explanation. So what is missing here? Or what needs to be added? Is definitely your O. So what's the outcome? If I am a British audience, after seeing this particular cartoon, what do you think is my reaction? All right. So hence the outcome would be for the British people to not support appeasement, or in fact question Chamberlain's on his action. Why did he allow uh, Germany to take some parts of Czechoslovakia? And if that were to happen, what is next? So obviously, this is a very, uh, I would say, a very harsh source because they wanted to question Chamberlain. So again, when you have purpose question, make sure identify creator, identify audience. Make sure you have a message. So message can be to criticize, to condemn, uh, to persuade, to influence. Never write to show to tell, okay? Because that's superficial. You already know source details. You already know explanation of source details. What you need next is definitely the outcome. Okay?
So again, quite easy for you to get purpose question. It is not something that is unfamiliar. Okay, so we have gone through inference. We have gone through purpose. Now we are looking a bit more into testing assertion. So what is testing assertion? Now, an assertion is a statement. Okay, it looks at using more than one sources to answer the question. Now you have this worksheet with you. All right, you can refer to it once you get back your file. And in this worksheet, it is really the LOMS. The LOMS means that it is how you are marked. Now it is eight marks, as you can see. And when I say that there's a statement, it is about having a statement here. The appeasement policy was totally effective in establishing peace. And you can see the keyword here is study all sources. You will have five sources. You don't have to use all five sources. Okay, for reason because if you look very closely, um, one yes and one no source is already going to be um, five marks. Okay, you need to do two yeses, two no to already get seven marks. All right, I'll talk to you about the bonus when we are in class. Okay, so what are we doing today? We are going to just look at one yes, one no. First, uh, make sure that you understand that before we move to a two yes, two no to get the highest marks, which is seven marks. All right, again, I'm going to use this source, I think, so that we are very familiar. Okay, so testing assertion, the question can be like this. I put a small R here because I don't want you to get confused with the normal inference that we do. But basically, this particular question is the same. It is actually looking at inference, evidence, as well as explanation. Now, the only difference is you need to identify and answer the question. Now, based on this, Based on what we understand from this source, the appeasement policy was totally effective in establishing peace. Now, obviously, we all know it is not, right? We unpack so many times. So this is a no. This is a disagree with statement, correct? Because we know that actually it is hard, right? Appeasement policy was not effective because it could result in war. So how do we answer? You can see I'm answering the question here. The source did not support the judgment or the statement. Now, blue and green seems very familiar. Why? Because blue, again, is source details. How about green? Well, green is explanation, but you must answer back to the question because the question is asking you, the appeasement policy was totally effective in establishing peace. This suggests that appeasement was not simple. It was complicated, which actually is the answer for the first inference that we did, right? And may not be successful. In fact, it may not establish peace at all. Can you see the, the last sentence of your explanation? I'm actually answering the question. So don't be afraid when you see inference um, or testing assertion type of question because basically it's just inference, right? Just because it says they study all sources, it does not mean that it is um, tough or it is hard. It is basically just looking at inference again. So next, we are looking at another source. Um, it is from this particular worksheet. Now let's look at this source a bit more in detail and you can see that in this particular source it is uh, published in a British newspaper but look at the words that's being used okay people of Britain your children are safe your husbands and your sons will not march to war peace is a victory for all mankind so it feels that Chamberlain has been quite successful, right? That the appeasement policy was effective because why? People did not have to go to war. And this is definitely a yes source or it is an agree with the statement. Okay, so how does it look like? The source supports the judgment and the statement. From the source, what am I doing? I am uh, giving the source detail or the evidence. Now, if it is a text source, then you quote. All right, you quote the particular source details that will support this. And lastly, this suggests that appeasement was successful as it avoided war, which meant it would be successful in establishing peace. Explanation is there. Okay. So quite easy. You give me one yes, one no, you would already get five marks. 
Alright, so like I said, one yes, one no is five marks, two yes, two no is seven marks. Alright, for students who already have the yellow colour paper, uh, you can do this, okay? Uh, for those of you who don't have the yellow colour paper because you are absent, I'm going to send this as a PDF. So you can do this first before lesson um, tomorrow. Alright, so um, I hope this video will help you um, for you to revise for your assessment.